Our, uh, the title of uh, our lecture today is uh, Telema. Really something that uh, we have to know and to comprehend since uh, our website, as you know, is called Telema, which is, is uh, a Greek word for willpower. So, it is written in the very ancient uh, scriptures in the Gnostic rituals. He or whosoever calls you Telemites won't commit any injustice unless he knows the word with perfection. Obviously, uh, the real adept is called a Telemite. And all those adepts like Jesus, Moses, Hermes, Krishna, all of them are Telemites. Because really, Telema is our motto. And uh, Willpower is really that, uh, uh, <coughs> that power that we need to exercise in order to achieve the self-realization of the being. Mm -hmm. To understand this is very important because the whole work lies on willpower on Telema. And to understand what is Telema itself and how are we related to it, it is necessary to understand the monad, to understand ourselves from that point of view in different levels. In order for you to see clearly about this dilemma or willpower. Let us go into our monad, our spirit, as we were talking in different lectures about uh, the monad. Remember that monad is a Greek word Monas, which means unity. This unity or monas, our monad, is that that we call the spirit. And that uh, we were talk in extensive very much in our lectures, in our previous lectures. We have stated, if you remember, that the monad sends part of it into the will of samsara, into the will of evolution and devolution in order to, for the monad to acquire its own development. As you see here, the action of sending part of itself into the evolution implies willpower. And this is something that uh, is necessary to visualize perfectly because that willpower is in itself what we're talking here. Remember that we said that the monad itself related with the three primary forces has all of the infinite possibilities in order to become a self-realized monad or that that we call a paramartha satya. So all monads have will. All of them have willpower. 
But to exercise willpower, it's necessary to learn how. And so the first step that we see here is the detachment of our own will in order to exercise that will. In other words, that essence that we call part of the monad that enters into the world is the same willpower. Because it's through willpower how the monad learns how to exercise its own powers, its own abilities, its own possibilities. As you see here, without willpower, it's not possible to exercise uh, the possibilities of the monad. So that's why that essence has to develop and does it through willpower. When you exercise, or when you see, for instance, or when you imagine, because in this uh, type of lecture you have to imagine, use your imagination, in order to see those beings or monads that we call cosmo creators. And you uh, have to understand that these beings have a lot of willpower. And they exercise their willpower in order to, uh, to do the will of the Absolute, or the will of their own particular Ein Sof, which expresses in the universe as a Trimurti, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Keter Chochma Bina. Obviously, their willpower is already developed. They act and know how to do it. They have the knowledge in order to do it. And this is why the monads that enter into the universe from the Absolute, in order to learn how to exercise their own will, need assistance from those that know already how to do their own will. You see here the difference? That a self-realized monad knows how to exercise its own willpower, while the new monads do not know how to exercise that willpower. So they had to learn. And that's why in heaven, which in this case we are talking in symbology, that heaven is related with the monad. It is written in the prayer of the Lord that says, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It is done in heaven. So in heaven, the will of God is done. But we have to understand how this will is performed or is uh, exercised in heaven meaning in the superior dimensions of the universe. Because we, we are here in this earth, or symbolical earth, which is our physical body, which is, of course, the symbolic or philosophical earth, in which the will of God has to develop. But up there in heaven, the cosmo creators are those that are exercising the will of God. The God that here, uh, that we are uh, uh, talking here, is not a person, but that entity that we call Christ. Or that in Kabbalah is called the Ains of Or, the Solar Absolute. The first emanation, it is written, of the unknowable divine is the light. It is written that the Ains of, 
which is that unknowable divine, has all of the powers in order to create. But in order to exercise his powers, it unfolds in three forces, which we know as Keter, Chochma, Binah, or Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. By doing that, by projecting from itself the three primary forces in order to exercise its powers, obviously in doing that, there is willpower, there is telema, there is action. So therefore, that's why it is written that Christ always do, always does, excuse me, the will of the Father. I want this Father that we are talking here, because it's indispensable to understand the meaning of the word that we use. As when you hear the word Father, you always put your mind in some individual with form. But when we said Father, we are pointing the cosmic common, universal creator, unknowable, which is not a person, but we call the absolute. It will be uh, uh, impossible to give form to the space to give form to that that has no form. From it emerges matter and energy, but it is not matter or energy. It is something that is unknowable. That's why it is called the unknowable divine, because it's not matter, it's not energy, but it's something. But we call it the nothing, because it's nothing related with this universe, but it's something that we don't know. So that's where we have to understand and to comprehend about the Absolute. So when from that emerges that light, which in Latin is called Lux and Power or Lucifer, which in Greek is Christ or Christer or Christeros or Christus. In which in Tibetan language is called Avalokiteshvara, in which in Mayan language is called Kukulkan, and that in Aztec language is called Quetzalcoatl, and that in Taoism is Kuan Yin. You see, you have to make a difference here in this uh, title Kuan Yin and Kuan Chi Yin, which is different. Guan Chi Yin is that feminine aspect that we were talking in the five aspects of Kundalini. But Guan Yin is that melodious voice that emerges from the absolute, the verb, the word. Receives many names in different religions. The truth is that that is pure willpower. It's the one that acts and exercise with wisdom in the universe. That's why it is written that that entity, that force, always does the will of God. But we have to understand, I said, what is that Father or God that we are talking here, which is not a person, but a force that is everywhere in the universe, in any galaxy. Or the infinite. And that will, we can call it uh, the ray of Okidanok, things of or, which divides in creation in the three primary forces Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And as you know, is named also these three primary forces in different religions, which we always synthesize in Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in Christianity. So, what the Absolute wants, what that cosmic, common, universal, abstract Father 
in the sense of creator wants is to crystallize, to crystallize the three primary forces in us. You see, when I said in us, I'm not talking about the monad. I'm talking about us as physical body. Because the monad has those three primary forces. And is utilizing these three primary forces. But they are not self-realized. In order to self-realize these three primary forces of the universe, they had to, we had to start from the physical body. The one that has those three primary forces developed completely or self-realizing themselves are cosmo creators because then the three primary forces act through their willpower in order to do what they have to do of course this will comes from the absolute that willpower is absolute willpower conscious the will of the absolute Therefore, the monads that for the first time enter into the universe, they learn how to utilize their willpower through the three primary forces that all of them have within, by learning from the Cosmo creators how to do it. And this is how I told you in many lectures, that the essence or uh, the monad sends the essence which is his own willpower which is learning because it's not developed into the world and begins to learn how to exercise that willpower in the mineral kingdom in the plant kingdom in the animal kingdom and this is how mechanically the monad is learning through the guidance of the cosmo creators with the developing of this elemental because when we talk about the mineral plant and animal kingdoms we also we always say it elemental because it's related with the elementals with the elements of nature this is how because the whole power of willpower is to exercise dominion as we said in other lectures of nature. Remember that nature is called Prakriti in Sanskrit. So while we are learning how to exercise dominion over nature, we do it through the elements. Because the elements are the crystallization of Prakriti, are the tatwas in different kingdoms, mineral, plant, animal. So that's why we are state in Gnosticism and the Master Samael Onveor write that in many books that the elements, the forces of the elements in nature are controlled by elementals. In other words, by the will of the elementals, by the will of those essences that are in nature learning how to exercise their willpower. But they are just obeying the commands of those monads that already developed that individual willpower. So that's why when you say, uh, when you see in nature the movements of the earth or the movements of the water or the movements of the air or fire, the intelligence that is moving that, the willpower that is using or moving those uh, elements of, of nature are the elementals, the monads in other words, that are utilizing their essences in order to control that or the guidance of the angels. Call it uh, angels, uh, the masters, monads that already know how to do it. That's why in every religion you find always angels or divas, master monads that are related with the different elements of nature. 
angels related with the fire, angels related with the air, with the water, with the earth. For instance, uh, in Hinduism, let me name four of them. Agni, for instance, is a, a, an angel of fire, very well known in Hinduism. She's a master monad that commands the salamanders of fire, meaning the elementals of the monads that developed in the element fire, whose physical bodies are plants or minerals or animals. You find, for instance, uh, the angel uh, Narayana, which is an angel of water, Paralda, which is the angel of air, uh, Brahma, and also Gob, many angels related with the elements. In the, in the different religious pantheons, you find many names because they are universal. And there are many pantheons in which uh, the monads self-realize and they become in charge of certain element in order to help the monads that are developing there to exercise their will. In Mexico, for instance, among the Aztecs, there is a god that is very well known whose statue in rock and stone is on the entrance of the Museum of Anthropology, whose name is Tlaloc. The ancient Aztecs, they uh, chiseled uh, in the rock uh, a symbol of this god, or angel, or mona, or diva, whatever you want to call it, who has that power, dominion of the water. It's another god there that had dominion of the fire, which is Wewetetl. There are many. So you find uh, different... Uh, Angels related with different uh, forces and different religions. For instance, this great angel called Ehecatl is an Aztec master angel that helped the master Jesus to put his physical body into the fourth dimension when the master Jesus was resurrecting. You see, and he's an angel of the Aztec pantheon. He's a great master who had physical body uh, in the past in America. And he uh, knows the secrets of the cosmic movement. Because on top of being uh, a, a deity related with the air, he knows a lot the cosmic movement. And uh, there was a reunion, is written, in the past with the Mayan masters, where Ehecatl physically was there, and he said this to the masters. I'm here in this planet Earth, as you know, for a long time, because he's a resurrected master, has immortal body. But unfortunately, in this planet, as you know, there is nobody capable of understanding my signs. And I'm here waiting for someone that, or, or people that will learn that, but these people become more degenerated and more degenerated. Therefore, please, I ask you your permission to go out of this planet and to go into another planet in order to teach because I want to exercise my signs. So I asked permission in order to leave this planet. And then the masters were, were in reunion there, or the Mayan race said, granted, because what you said is real. There is no people here capable of understanding your science. So the master Ejecato physically left the earth through the fourth dimension and went into another planet. So this is how the masters uh, can do 
and unfortunately we lost the opportunity of learning something physically here because our uh, degeneration. So here you see how really in nature there are many great masters, many great individuals, self-realized monads, that not only can teach the elementals or the monads that are in evolution, but also those that are acquiring mastery in order to learn certain laws, cosmic laws. So there is a vast, really, we will say, that's why they are called masters. You see? Sometimes they well, why are they called masters? Because they teach. Each one of us has a different uh, mission, different qualities that we, we need to develop and to teach to those that are starting. Because there is a variety. Remember that it says that variety is unity and unity is variety. So this is how in the mechanical way the essence which is that willpower is learning by exercising willpower. By developing that in exercising uh, its abilities Many parts of the monad are being developed. That's why in the book called uh, Occult Medicine and Practical Magic, the Master Samael on Veor explains there about the elemental advocate or intercessor elemental that everyone has. I have my own particular elemental advocate and you too. Because the being, the mona itself, as we said in many lectures, has many parts that needs to develop. And of course, the elemental advocate is one of those parts that we develop from the mineral kingdom into the plant kingdom, to the animal kingdom. And that element advocate knows all of the signs of nature related with evolution. That's why with the Gnostics, we said the present evolutionists, they just talk about theories. If they want to learn really the law of evolution, not, not at, as a theory, but as a law, if they enter into communication with that part of the being, which is the elemental advocate, then you, they will remember how the law of evolution works in nature. And he is precisely working under the law of God. Mechanically, obviously. But this is how it's, uh, everything starts. It is developed. Because later on in time, when the essence enters into the level of humanoid or intellectual animal, that essence have the ability or will have if the monad uh, work on it in order to develop individual willpower. Then the monad will exercise its own power individually over nature. It has already those things, those elements already developed, but in, uh, how you call, in communion. Uh, is not uh, working his willpower individually, but collectively. And this is what we have to understand. One thing is to have willpower and act with willpower collectively. And one, another thing is to use it individually. But first, we have to learn it collectively. As when we are in the school, collectively we are learning how to do this, how to do that, math, math uh, how to write, how to, how to read, and many things. But little by little, you are individualizing yourself in this society in which you have to exercise certain particular uh, vocation 
in which you are independent. But when that thing arrives in your life, while that arrives, you have to be in a collective way. That's just a similitude in order for us to comprehend this topic. The same way the essences, the monads, they are collectively. But the angels that move the elements, that command those elementals to move the forces of nature, act under the law of equilibrium. And they are not attached to matter. Because in the movements of the forces of nature, physically, many individuals die, others are born. And the movement continues mechanically. Because, as you know, energy transformed into matter, matter into energy. There is no waste in the universe. This is something that is known. So when you are awakened and know the movement of this energy into this matter and this matter into this energy, you are not attached to individual elements or forces. You just execute what you have to execute because the universe has to continue in its way, in its development. Each time, the absolute is more conscious of itself because all of its units are developing and acquiring knowledge of themselves and exercising their willpower. The problem, of course, as you see, lies in the moment in which we enter into a humanoid body or intellectual body because all of the other bodies, physical bodies, uh, animals, plants, and minerals, have mind. But it's a collective mind. A mind that is related with the laws of evolution. But in our level, we have a particularity of having intellect which give us the capacity of becoming individuals. Because we reason about our will. So, that type of intellect give us the opportunity of continuing, continuing our development of that willpower which is collectively very well developed when we enter into the animal kingdom, intellectual animal kingdom. So our goal is to transform that will that we learn in nature and to transform it into individual. But for that, of course, the monad needs vehicles because the elements or the vehicles, bodies that we have are collective. As you know, it's called protoplasmatic bodies. Those bodies belong to nature, to the collective nature. And they act mechanically. So obviously the monad needs certain elements, vehicles, bodies, that will act individually in order to exercise his own will individually. That's why it's impossible for somebody without solar bodies, without individual bodies, to exercise his own will. Because those bodies that we have, whether they are the physical body, astral body, mental body, are mechanical, are collective, and obey other laws, which are the law of evolution and devolution. That's why it is difficult to acquire individuality because in order to do it, we have to exercise our own will. In nature, we find the two laws of evolution and devolution, which, which are these two laws that act in every planet that nature exercises as his own will in order to survive. Nature needs 
matter that evolves and also matter that devolves. That the matter that devolves, yes, as you know, is in the infra dimensions. Just matter that crystallizes the forces of the moon or lunar forces in order to give consistency to the inner layers of the earth. While the matter that evolves and energy that evolves in the surface is attracting other type of energies for the development of life. But with the bodies that we have, that nature gives us, freely, without, without the intervention of our willpower, because you know that even the physical body that we have, we didn't use the willpower in order to get it. Suddenly we were uh, crying there in the cradle, and some giant took us in his hands, and I was our father. And then we cried, I said, oh my goodness, again, this is another physical body. Later on in time, we forget because the ego take t takes over. But that's why when somebody is being born, always cries. Because this life is really bitter. We are submitted to loss that we don't control. And that's the problem. But we have the opportunity to exercise. Uh, willpower to develop that and that's why the great masters monads have already achieved that came into the earth in order to teach us the great master Jesus that came 2,000 years ago he said it is necessary to be born again in order to enter into the kingdom of heaven that kingdom is out of the mechanical laws of nature has nothing to do with me mechanicity. To be born again, of course, implies the creation of individual bodies through which willpower will act and the monad acquire the self-realization. Do you see here? This is telema. Our motto is Telema. But we have to understand and to, and to find a difference. Because unfortunately, the essence, that willpower, that Telema that we have, that everybody has, became identified with the mind and with the senses. Because the mind is always related with the exterior world. The mind is always identified, fascinated with nature, with the mechanicity of nature. And why? Because this mind that we have belongs to nature. And that's why in Buddhism, the first thing that you have to do is to dominate the mind. That mind, we said in many lectures, is the ego. That ego is precisely those elements that are created because our fascination with the exterior world through the senses. Now we are descending directly into the physical body. Because the development of that individual will has to begin in the physical body. And to go up to Tifereth, as you know, which is willpower. Tifereth is also called the human soul. But we said that Tifereth is willpower. But that willpower that is under the guidance of our own particular individual God. And this is something very important to know. Because nobody can develop that will if he's not in contact with his own monad. 
You see? And that will, of course, is related also with the laws of heaven, the laws of the cosmic creatures, of the angels. That are the forces, the energies that exercise the will of God. That's why it is written that Jesus said, as willpower, you see here, we will say, Jesus, as telema, he said, nobody goes to the Father but through me. And this is how we have to understand, because it's not the physical body of Jesus that will take us there. It's that willpower that was developed already in Jesus that said that, and that is in every one of us. Because we need the help of the will of God, which is the Son of God. The will of God, the Son of God, the Son of Man, that has to develop in us in order for us to do the will of our own monad. And this is a process of initiation. It's not a matter of believing, but exercising telema means action. And we said, for instance, that the five senses in this physical body are related with the tatwas. And this is how nature enters and exercises his power in our own consciousness, which is willpower. But since we are learning how to exercise willpower, that able, according to the book of Genesis, that able is very weak because Cain, the mind, is stronger. Why is Cain stronger than Abel? Because Cain is related with the mind, related with nature, related with the mechanicity of the forces of nature. What Abel only does the will of his own God, his own monad. That's why it's written that the inner God always is pleased with, with the doings of Abel which is that essence that is learning to exercise the will of God. While Cain, he doesn't care about that. Cain, what, what Cain wants is to be fascinated with nature. That's why in, in the Bible, in many other books, sacred books, you always find willpower represented as somebody that obeys God. For instance, in uh, Bhagavad Gita, that willpower that obeys God is called Arjuna. And in this case, the inner God is represented by Krishna. So we will say that Arjuna is the Bodhisattva of Krishna. To understand. So then you find different symbols. But in this case, we will say when we start developing willpower, we will say that that's Abel. And unfortunately, Cain always kills Abel because he's stronger. How does it, physically speaking here in the lecture that we are talking about, Telema, he does it in this way. The mind, as you know, in the other lectures we explain, is connected with the senses. We receive the impressions from the exterior world and enters into the mind. And because that mind is strong, related with the mechanicity of nature, control that will. And that will is called able. So that able becomes killed by the mind because it becomes self-willed, meaning an essence under the control of the mind. This is how our consciousness is bottled up into that mind. And is becoming, instead of becoming will of God, that essence is coming self-willed. It's the same will, you know. That's why it is written. Demonius is Deus inversus. Latin for the demon is the will of God inverted. That's why in the... Veras, they say that the demons are created by Shiva. 
The gods are created by Shiva. Everything is created by Shiva, but also the demons. And we said, how? How is it possible that the Ain Sof create demons? Well, in this way, it is how. Because the essence still doesn't know how to exercise itself as willpower. So therefore, it becomes inverted, fascinated, identified with the mind, with the senses. And as is inverted, is a demon. I mean, it's the same will of God, but for devolution. And this is precisely what is happening in our planet Earth. Our own will, the will of God, which is ourselves, that essence that should develop, is now under the service of nature, the mechanicity of nature. It's evil will. That evil will, that evil will is evil, dead, for the spirit. But is in the earth. It's a servant, a slave of the Pharaoh. And that Pharaoh is Cain. This is how you want to understand the Israelites were slaves in Egypt. That Egypt is precisely this physical world in which we are identified with the senses, with the, with, with the mind. And the Pharaoh is that intellect that slaves Israel, which in this case is the same evil. Different symbols for the same thing. But it's necessary for the will of God to come down and to free that evil. And that will of God, in this case, is Moses. Okay. Which, of course, is a development that we have to understand. We have to develop our own particular Moses in order to liberate Israel, which are the parts of the essence, which is the will of God, which is battle-up into the ego, into the mind, into Cain, the killer. This is how you say that the hell of God is precisely its love towards us because we are, we are precisely part of God. We are His will. What is it? That, what is that? The hell. hell. The hell of God. His own hell. Does the, the particles of God that suffer in hell, that particles of God are we, the essence. You understand that? Because that essence is part of the monad. The monad doesn't go to hell. Only its will, which is bottled into the ego, which is that essence that has to learn how to develop. So we have to understand that we are the feet and God is the brain. To understand that is indispensable because most of the time we think that God is somewhere and we are separated. And that is wrong. Because that is the will. The feet are moving. If the feet are taking us to some place, it's because the brain is commanding the feet to walk. Unfortunately, the feet don't, do, do not obey the brain because there are some people that do not obey the monad. So therefore, the essence enters into hell in order to disintegrate the ego, in order to liberate his own will. You understand that? That God needs that will in order to develop. The mona needs the essence in order to develop completely. And that's the will. But that is turning into evil will. And that's why we say that we have to educate the sight. This is what we said in the first, in the beginning. Because the sight, as you see the eyes, you can look toward the left, toward the right, towards up, towards down. You can close your eyes if you don't want to see. That's why the eyes are related with the willpower. That sight is precisely the first step that we have to do to educate the sight in order to develop the essence which is related with the pineal gland because the seat of the soul, the seat of the willpower is the pineal gland. 
So that pineal gland has to be strengthened by educating the site. Not only the outer site, but the inside also. And that's why we need meditation. Because to meditate is to educate the inner sight in order to develop the will of God. But developing the will of God is how we control the physical body. In this case, the physical body is a symbol of the devil. The devil is this, the physical body. There is a custom, of course, to transform the impressions that enter into the senses in the inverted way. So we had to educate the devil. That's why Jesus said to the devil, it is written, you have to serve your Lord. You have to obey your Lord, not to tempt it. But the physical body through the senses is always tempting will in the pineal gland. To make the body to serve God is to educate the senses. And that's the first step. The education of the sight. That's why the Master Samael on the or, he said, when he was developing in a lecture there in Mexico, he said, you know, I will tell you something that happened to me. He says, you know how the men look at women with a lot of detail. Better if I said, he said, with a lot of perversity. And it's because their eyes are on the service of Cain. They feed their lust through their eyes because that evil will is desire. Their essence, unfortunately, is bottled up in desire. And desire is related with nature, with the mechanicity of nature. So, obviously, I, he said, because I was fallen with the ego alive, I uh, had that tendency. So, I meditated a lot in order to educate my sight, in order to learn how to see women without lust. If you observe me, he says, you will see how my eyes always see women from the waist up, never from the waist down. And sometimes only the face. But to do that, I fought a lot, he says, against many egos of lust. I meditated and I laid a lot. I learned that. When he said I learned that, doesn't mean that he learned in one day. He learned in the process of meditating in that mechanicity of the evil will, which is the, our own essence, trapped in lust. And obviously, he said the master, I learned that. And also, he says in the same lecture, he says, and I also learned not to see pornography. Obviously, if he said that is because before he was seeing it, mechanically or whatever, but he was a victim of it. And he says, I learned not to see pornography. I learned how to see women like that. And Thank goodness, my God helped me, and I annihilate all the ego of lust. Because that's a process of patience. It's not something that we, in what we will learn in one week or in one month. It's a long process. Because we have many egos of lust, in which our essence are accustomed, of course, to do the mechanicity of nature. If you observe the animal kingdom, which is the kingdom where we were before this animal kingdom, intellectual animal kingdom, you will see how the dogs smell and always they do the smelling the sex of the female dogs. How the cats smell the female sex of the, uh, of the female cats. And all the animals are like that. It's instant. It's natural. But that is collectively obeys the laws of instinct. So we have to transform instant into intuition. And for that, we have to educate our willpower. That's why our motto is Telema. If we do not educate our sight to begin, because we had to educate our ears, we had to educate our smell, our taste, our touch. Remember that we said that willpower 
in the physical body is related with the sense of touch. Because the essence works through the physical body to the sense of touch. That's why the main work in this physical body is a sexual transmutation. Because the sense of the physical body related with the physical body is touch. You see, the sense related with the, the sight is willpower. The sense related with the hearing is the mind, the, the, mind, the, the mind body. The sense related with smell is related with emotions, with the astral body. And the taste is related with the vital body. But the touch itself is directly related with the physical body. And that's why the sexual organ is a more sensitive organ related with the sense of touch in which we had to exercise our willpower. That's the beginning, the, the, the very bottom of it. That's why certain schools and organizations that teach how to develop or how to acquire self realization but they don't teach chastity in the physical plane, they are in the wrong way. Now you understand why Buddhists, Lamas, they always are in chastity or celibacy. That's why Christianity in the beginning was, of course, teaching that, but now it's celibacy. But all religions always teach how to control the sexual energy. And why? One of the symbols of Christ, or the will of God in, in, uh, in physical body, as Christ willpower, is the sexual phallus in a state of erection. There are many symbols of Christ. But that is one of the most uh, phallic symbols, I mean, most obvious symbols in ancient times. That's why you find that uh, in the pagan religions, they were worshipping their phallus in a state of erection. Because that is the will of God when you know how to control the sense of touch in your physical body. Your hands are always related with the sense of touch. And that's how you relate it, whether you are serving the devil, your body, in order to satisfy your lust with your hands and with your sexual organ. Masturbation is one of those vices in which the individual becomes slave of the forces, of mechanical forces of nature. His own essence, his own self, is bottled up into evil will, a will that will serve only to the forces of nature, purposes of nature in the infra dimensions. And that's why in the beginning, our motto is telema, and only with telema, we transmute the sexual force, which will increase our willpower. The energy that rises in the spinal column is willpower. It's electronic. Did you ever hear that it is stated that the consciousness, willpower, is electronic? Did you hear that the sexual energy is electronic? Did you ever hear that the Kundalini is electronic? That lies in the electrons? That we have to awake that energy which lies in the electrons? Which is the Divine Mother who is willpower too? So that's the lemma. Willpower. And by developing that will power in the spinal column is how we create the electronic bodies or solar bodies in order to exercise the will of God or to have that individuality of willpower in us. So obviously when we create the astral body, that's willpower in the astral plane. Or as we said, consciousness. Because it's a willpower, there is a conscious willpower. It's not a mechanical willpower that we don't know what to do. When we have the astral body, we have will of God in the astral body. When we have a mental solar body, we have the will of God in the mental body. Because God, the monad, is controlling the bodies you know, with his own will. And that's why when we reach the top, which is Tifereth, which is willpower, 
That willpower, related with the individuality of our own monad, is already developed. And that's why it's written that when we enter into that level of willpower, and then we have to choose two ways, the direct path or the spiral path, which is our own will. In order to completely develop or self-realize our willpower, in the spiral way or in the direct way, the direct path. We know uh, to the lectures that we learn here that the direct path, the, the straight path, is related with the eightfold path of the Buddha. The Buddha itself is the monad that has to exercise his willpower to the eightfold path through his own willpower. And that willpower is Tifreth, which is his body sadhva. When somebody takes the straight path, receive an extra help. We will say, in this case, an extra willpower. The telema of the universe, which is called Christ, that telema that does the will of God in heaven, enters into the Bodhisattva in order to help him to exercise his own will power. And that's precisely the beauty of this telema. Because Christ only enters in telema. Why Christ enters in telema? Because Christ is telema. The Son of God do the will of God, so enters into the will of that particular God that already reached the second birth, which is a twice born, that already demonstrated with his own will, after quitting the astral, mental, and causal body, that is a man of good will. Glory to God in heaven and peace to the men with willpower on earth. But that willpower, of course, was tested through the sexual act. That's why in order to achieve those, those levels, we had to transmute our sexual energy. This is how willpower is tested. And the one that tests that willpower is always Lucifer, which is the sexual strength, sexual willpower, we will say. You see there the similitude, all the symbol of that telema. And that's why we have to remember ourselves. To remember ourselves is to remember our own will. That's why we said, when we remember ourselves, we exercise willpower. Because that willpower in itself is ourselves. But we remember ourselves in a sense with God. Because we have to obey, we have to exercise the will of our own monad. In order to go ahead in that development. And here we have to be alert and vigilant as a watchman in a time of war. We have a war, and that war is against the unfaithful ones, against the unbelievers. Those that who do not believe in the will of God are lust, anger, greed, pride, laziness, gluttony, fear, vanity, and all of those defects that we have in abundance within. Those are the unfaithful ones, the unbelievers, that we have to annihilate. And that's why we have to be alert, observant. Because through the senses is how they act. Through the mind is how they feed themselves. And to change, to eliminate them, and to teach our consciousness under the will of our God how to perform the will of God. Because if we observe ourselves, we are not performing the will of God. We are performing the will of the mind. That's mechanicity, this mechanical mind that we have. To learn that is to know how to exercise our willpower. Now you understand why it is impossible for somebody to achieve mastery if he doesn't understand and comprehend his willpower. 
in relation with their senses, in relation with his mind. An individual that says that only by asking to your Divine Mother, Divine Mother, I now laid me this last that is bothering me now. And then you are ahead, you are achieving civilization. No, you are not achieving nothing with that. Because your willpower has to know how to act. Mechanicity is mechanicity. You can ask, of course, if you my mother and I me this ego, and so what? It's no comprehension there, how are you going to develop? The fact that your ego is acting in the wrong, or your essence, your willpower is acting in the wrong way as desire, is because we are identified with the world. It's by comprehension of that, is how we are going to exercise the will of God. And of course, since it is a difficult task, we need the help of somebody that already did it, which are the masters, the guidance. But if somebody says, you don't need to meditate in order to exercise your willpower, in order to acquire telema, is lying. Because everybody is using their will in the wrong way, with the Gnostics. That's why we are called Telemites, because we are one to exercise the will of God. What God? Our own particular individual God. And if the Lord, that energy, which is called Christ, enters into us in order to help us, good. Because we need guidance. But nobody can perform the will of God if it's not through the transformation that we have to perform in ourselves. That's why we learn and we need to learn about Christ, the prana, about nature, the forces. Because it's by learning intellectually first is how we want to apply and understand how to apply our will to nature. If you awake, then you will discover that that information is already inside your monad. And then we develop. Because, of course, there are many individuals outside there that they exercise willpower without annihilating the ego. Meaning that their essence is bottled up within the ego and exercising will in relation with infra dimensions. To develop powers in order to exercise power over nature, mechanically, is easy. Because you don't need to annihilate anything. But you go to hell anyhow. You go to the devolution. You are annihilated. The only way to exercise the will of God and the power over nature is by allowing the monad to do his will through us, which we are our will. Or his will. This is how you remember the prayer in the, in, the, in the Garden of Gethsemane. When Jesus is on the rock of Jesod, praying to his God, and says, Father, if it's possible, take this chalice of bitterness out of me. The chalice is a symbol of the sexual yoni. Because in order to exercise the will of God, you have to enter into the ninth sphere. That's why he's in a rock, and he is talking about the chalice of bitterness meaning transmutation and bitterness for the mind. If it's possible, take this chalice out of me. But not my will, by thine be done. Your will has to be done. Because that will is done through the sexual act, through the transmutation. Do you understand that? Do you comprehend that? How Judas, which is in relation with the sexual glance, comes and kiss him and deliver him to Pilate, to Caiaphas. But Jesus never bent himself to Pilate, neither to Caiaphas. He only kneeled himself to his own God. Pilate, the intellect, is questioning him and he's answering, but he doesn't kneel before him. And he says to him, you have power over me because it's given from, from above. But I only, only do the will of my God. 
in Caiaphas, the evil will, wants to, to him to do miracles in front of him. And Jesus is only silent because he knows that Caiaphas, the evil will, hates the will of God. That's the ego. And he goes to the cross and is crucified because in the crossing of the phallus and the uterus is the way to annihilate all of those traitors that we have within. Barabbas is within. Pilate is within. Caiaphas is within. Judas is within. All of those that cry crucifixia, crucifixia, crucifixia are within. Not outside, are within. And this is how we had to crucify and to ourselves in order to annihilate that, to descend into hell and to resurrect three days after, which is symbolic. It's a matter of willpower. The whole work is telema. That's how our motto is telema. Do you have questions? Obviously, you when you ego in the astral plane when you have, have your physical body, can you act with the physical body? Can you move? Can you exercise your will in this physical body? Obviously, you do. Right? You walk if you want to walk. You don't walk. You sit down. You move your head, whatever. Even though your body is not a solar body, but you use your individuality and you move it to your home. You go to a restaurant, whatever. You move it because that that's willpower. In order to move it, in order to act, it needs willpower. Even if it's evil will, but it's will. So therefore, if you have an astral solar body, obviously, you can move, you can act in the astral plane because you have an individual body that can do it. You see? That's why it's called individuality. That the ego can utilize that astral body, obviously, yes. Because if your ego can utilize that physical body that you have, also can utilize the astral body, even if it's solar. Can utilize the mental solar body as well. And that's why we have to be always attentive and alert at the watchman in time of war, because the ego is always there and want to do its own will, which is the evil will. What can you say about the phrase, do with thy will? And the very prominent idea that Aleister Crowley is the main teacher of Telema. Well, Aleister Crowley is, is a, it just degenerated the doctrine. Do what thou wilt. Obviously, the demons do their wilt, but invert it. Do what thou wilt. The angels do the will of God. The phrase should be like this. Do what thou wilt. This should be the will of God. If you do thy own will, who are you? Right? If you are the ego, if you think you are the ego, and then you will end like Alexa Crowley, smoking opio and try or, or taking mushrooms and doing that. And of course, the will was developing, but inverted, because Demonius is Deus inverted or inversus, meaning that his own will was going down, as he says as the beast 666, which is the ego. But do what thou wilt, telema in the right way, in the right way, is to do the will of God, to do the will of our own monad. That's the right phrase in the right way. So it could be applied in both ways. Because in order to be a demon, you need telema. In order to be an angel, you need telema. Meaning, you need the essence. Because without the essence, where is the understanding of that. Obviously, Alexa Crowley developed evil will, his own telema, and following his own group, he's following the evil will, which is the will of the ego. In order to develop good will, you have to annihilate the evil will, and that's ego, mechanicity. And to develop not only in the physical plane, in the astral plane, in the mental plane, in the causal plane, beauty plane, spiritual plane, and higher levels, until you become a Paramartha Satya. That's the will of God. The real Telemite is a Paramartha Satya. An inverted Telemite is Alexei Crowley. Another question. 
there are many who believe they do the will of their being, even to the point of spreading gnosis and delivering the teachings. How does such a person tell the difference between the real being and self-will? Well, uh, if you observe the works of the Master Samael and the Or, and the masters that came before him, that will exercise in telema, willpower, and if you teach the doctrine of those people in the right way, as they are teaching it, obviously you are helping them. And you are, of course, exercising telema. We cannot deny that in the beginning, all Gnostics work with their Gnostic ego. That comes into my mind, that's the very moment you see, uh, is information from the Bible. It's a story there when David was doing the will of God. But one day he was observing a woman. She was bathing herself. Her name, Bathsheba. Bathsheba. We will say, the daughter of the seven. Who is that daughter of the seven? Mm -hmm. That willpower of the seven serpents, we will say. Kabbalistically speaking, that means Bethsheba. So, David came in love with her. But that woman was married with somebody else. I don't remember the name. But was one of the main soldiers of David. So that meaning, what, what, what do you understand there? Part of his ego is still bottled up, married with that willpower that he needs completely to himself. Because the whole willpower for the initiate is called Winiver. That Amazon. Gebura. That's precisely willpower. When the initiate merits his willpower from heaven, which is Gebura, it's completely self-realized. It's a resurrected master. But then you see, David discovered that that will, part of himself, is married with part of his self-ego. And he wants to, to marry that, so he can send him in, in the front and kill him. Of course, this is very valid written. You say, how is it possible? Well, in the beginning, the Gnostic serves himself with the ego, the Gnostic ego and teaches with the Gnostic ego. Am I teaching here with the Gnostic ego? It might. But later on, my God will kill me too. That ego. In order for me, of him, because he is Solomon, the king, to marry with the beautiful Sulamite. Earlier you mentioned the elemental intercessor. Can you say more about this? How is this related to us? And can we invoke the elemental intercessor in the astral plane? We have, uh, uh, it is written, if you read the book uh, uh, of the Gnostic Bible, the Pisti Sophia, the master explained there that the being itself has many parts. What we said in all the lectures, all the possibilities of being a, a, a God, a creator, is within the monad. Those are parts of the being that need to be developed. Twelve apostles need to be developed. Jesus himself inside of us has to be developed. Moses himself had to be developed. John the Baptist in, in, within us had to be developed. And of course, there are many other parts, like in this case, the elemental advocate. That is part of the being that has all of the knowledge of the rituals of nature. That's why the Master Samael explains in his book of medicine. If you don't know the ritual of any plant, when you want to utilize it in order to heal somebody or to heal himself, yourself, what you have to do is just to bless the plant in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in the name of Keter, Chokmah, and Binah, and by the Tetragrammaton, and to command your elemental advocate, or, in other words, to communicate with your monad, my monad, my God, I beg you, please, Command that part of you, which is the elemental advocate, who knows all the rituals of nature. Because we, if I am in this level, obviously, I learn all of that already. So he knows that, but I don't remember because I am asleep. 
So please command that part of you, that part of me, which is the elemental advocate, to do the ritual of this plant. In order for me to do this or to do that, whatever, and then you through the plant, you, you, you do what you have, you have to do. Because that elemental advocate knows everything in relation with the magic of nature. And everybody has it. While those that are in evolution, like animals, still are learning that. But if we are in this level, it's because we have it already. But of course, it's part of the will of God. It's not part of your ego. So how are you going to comprehend that then? How do you if you ask an elemental to take away certain parts, from them, how do you comprehend it then? Comprehending what? The annihilation or the, or the elemental. That's another part. That has nothing to do with the comprehension. You are, you are asking to your God to do certain work that your God already knows through that elemental advocate, but you, that you forgot because you became bottled up into the ego, into your mind. doesn't mean that your God is going to forget that. God, remember this, your monad always knows everything in relation with evolution in this level. That we are disconnected with our monad, that's another thing. And that's why, because we are disconnected, we have to pray our monad to command the elemental. But if we are already self-realized, we call the elemental advocate and say, do this, do that. Why? Because we already know the elemental advocate. But now you are just listening that we have it, but you are not aware of it. You are not conscious of it, because we are asleep. So therefore, by comprehension, by annihilation of the ego, you start developing. Oh, I am related with this part of nature. That is called your, 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 your how do you call it? Your uh, Nawal in Aztec language. That part of you, which is in relation, says, oh, your Nawal is a tiger. Your Nawal is an eagle. Well, when you discover in relation with the animal kingdom, your Nawal, and then you know how to work with those forces which are already in you, but not developed, because you are bottled up into the ego. In the first chapter of the Day Spring of Youth, the Master Moria wrote, thus in the higher schools, the word will is seldom used. Why is that? Because they do not understand what is that will. In the higher schools. On the higher schools. Well, uh, I don't know in which sense is the Master Moria saying that there. But obviously, uh, the whole work is dilemma, is will. Maybe they don't use will, but they might use another word for that. Or maybe because in the higher schools, um, you are already doing the will of your God. So it's not even a question because you're one with him. And you're already yeah, yeah. Him. once you are doing your will of God, you don't need to hear the will. You just do it. Yeah, there's no differentiation. You're already one with it. Okay. How does the Gnostic student know or protect themselves to make sure that they are doing proper will or right action? If there is not conflict between the three brains, there is the will of God. Right, upright thought, upright feeling, upright action is the will of God. But many believe they and are convinced in their heart that they're doing the right thing, but they're not. So how does one know and make sure? And that, that's, that's precisely, you have to observe yourself, you have to meditate, because before doing something really that will imply or, or be involved with other people, you have to meditate very carefully. If what you're doing is the will of your own being, because sometimes could be, Negative feelings that we know, uh, we know, understand and comprehend that the negative feelings turn us liars and disconnected with the truth, which is God. So, further, in relation to that question, how does willpower, how do you address willpower in the case of the chapter Treason from the Mystery of the Golden Blossom, when there was a student who was convinced they were doing the right thing? Well, it's because he trusted in his own ego. That's why in many lectures and many times that people ask me that, I said, when I see something inside of clairvoyantly, right, inside of me or in dreams, I have to wait. I never open my mouth immediately. I observe. He says, 
because if you know there is infra conscious clairvoyance, unconscious clairvoyance, and subconscious clairvoyance, many types. And if you study very carefully the doctrine, this is precisely the way in order not to commit mistakes. The master explained that in endocrinology and criminology. And there are many Gnostics from the past that they were rejecting to nourish themselves with the knowledge because they said it is not necessary to learn the doctrine or to study too many things. It's not necessary to know many, uh, a lot of Kabbalah or alchemy. You just practice the three factors and this is it. While, of course, the Master Samael teach us different things because we have to learn not to commit mistakes. Obviously, in that chapter of the Mystery of the Golden Blossom, Brutus, in his present reincarnation, was an alpha, uh, how do you call it, uh, illiterate. He didn't like to read. He was just trusting his own visions. If he will know a, a lot of what we know now, he will, he, he will wait and not to commit that mistake of misjudging the Master. And it's because always we have to understand that the defects that we see in others are abundantly within us. And we don't have to go there and to play a judge of karma and to accuse anybody of anything if we are alive. If we want to trust our own visions, our own judgment, only when the ego is completely annihilated. If it's not completely annihilated, don't ever trust your own visions. Study them, analyze them, and follow them if they are good. But don't open your mouth. There's a problem with this Brutus was that he have a big mouth and he was opening and accusing always and whatever. Right? That's the problem. That's why one of the requisites of the magician is silence. To know how to speak. What can you say about giving advice or receiving advice in relation to willpower? Many instructors give advice and tell others what to do, tell students what to do, and many students seek advice without trusting their own. Well, obviously, when one is asleep, we always look for advice. We always want uh, a, a wise statement in order to do what we are doing. But we have always to analyze what we hear and to trust our own internal God. Upright thought, upright feeling, upright action. Because sometimes the instructor can give an advice related with his own level or, or with a, a lot of uh, prejudices. And if you don't know how to advise, you can commit a mistake. In my case, for instance, when somebody asked me for advice, I said, yeah, this or that, but the best thing, go and meditate. And, and they said, why you always send me to meditation? Because I don't want to be responsible for your, what you ask. Meditate and do whatever your inner God, your inner feelings told, tell you to do it. Because if I said, do this, do that, it's like in the time of the... Uh, time of the, when the Mr. Little Antis was alive. One day I was commenting with this friend of mine that uh, she received a call of somebody I said, Mistress, I left my wife and now I am married with this woman and I am with him, I with her. I just want your blessings, friends, because I want to go ahead and cry. And then the mistress said, okay, go ahead. If you think that with this woman will be uh, the way, do it, start. Months later, the same guy calls again. Oh, Mr. you know, I, I, thank you for advice, but I returned to my wife and because this. And then he says, oh, yeah, and she hung up. And he called again. Is some uh, problem there with the telephone? No, no, I hung up. I don't want to talk with you. Period. And this precisely says what happened with the Gnostics. They come and ask for advice. One advises, and after that, if it's not good, if it's something wrong, they say, oh, he told me to do that. So it's his fault, not my fault. This is how the ego works. So therefore, when somebody comes to me and asks for advice, I just give whatever I want. I said, but the best advice for you is to meditate and, and find that answer within you and act based on that. Because 
all of us are with ego. And listen to this, even the gods commit mistakes. It sounds to me like you would achieve more willpower if it's almost like working on lust constantly. There's one thing you have to do in a day, say, right? To work on an ego. To me, it sounds like lust be always the main, you know. Lust, obviously. That's why it's called the original sin, because it's the originated of all the sins, defects, and vices that we have within. To work with lust is the beginning and the end of the work. Would that give you more willpower than to work on anger and, and jealousy and envy then? Matthew Samael, personally, when I talk with him about this topic, he says, obviously, during the day, will appear anger, will appear pride, meditating that, but working your lust. Tomorrow, Maybe uh, gluttony will uh, appear in your life and you will meditate in gluttony. But don't forget your lust. And he says, and after that, you maybe next uh, day, uh, your pride is being fed by people there, whatever. So meditate in that. But don't forget your lust. I said, okay, master, I understand that. So he says, every day you have to work with your lust. Because that's the main, the main one. And why he said that? Because he was doing that, obviously. So obviously the origin of, of our level in which we are, or the mess in which we are, is last. What do you think that, I mean, if, if the gods let, you know, elementals be used for, you know, evil also, you know, people could use the elementals. Could use the elementals, way. not the gods. No, no. The elementals, yeah. Right, it's because they, they know how to exercise power over them. See, for instance, a dog. A dog is a beautiful elemental. You can teach the dog how to be friendly with your friends, or you can teach the dog how to kill. But the dog is only learning from you. If you teach him to kill, you are an e using your, your will over him, over the dog, because he doesn't know how to do it. No, but like plant rituals and, and same thing. The elemental is the same thing. The elemental obeys and do, or does, I mean, the elemental does what? He has to do if you know how to command the elemental. For evil, doesn't matter. But the karma falls on you, not in the elemental. It's like if your dog kills somebody else, you will go to, the, to jail. But not, not your dog. Same is true of how you teach your students. Huh? Same is true of how you teach others. Exactly. They can't hear that, so. I don't. I don't. <laughs> you should say that because they can't hear that. Oh. What was your question? The same is true of how you teach other people. Yeah, the same in the way that you teach people. That's why, since we are asleep and in, in development, what is what we do in Telema? We translate the books of the master because he is the one responsible for this doctrine in this era of Aquarius. He's a red crest of Aquarius. So we collaborate for him. And it says, if you, are don't, you don't comprehend very well this, well, read the book, Christ's Will. He wrote a book called Christ's Will. And in that book that eventually we will print, it was written about willpower. Of Christ's willpower, of course. No evil will. Yeah, but he, every, you know, 10 different people are going to read the same book and each one is going to get a different interpretation. Well, and that will be their, their business. That will be their business, their level, you see? Here, of course, I'm talking on my own level, what I understand of willpower. But obviously, all of, all, each one of you is on a different level. You have to follow your own level, right? So obviously, each one of you that are listening to this lecture is understanding it in different levels. I know that. But then you would have to reread the book a hundred times each time you think, you know. It seems to me, every time I read a book, okay, man, over and over, it's like you gain a different understanding each time. Yeah. You know, and you just can't read a book like once, you know. Well, that's why down. you need to meditate on what you read, because by meditating on what you read, you gain the comprehension of but that. It's never and go an deeper. End. Right, but I don't, I don't think there's like an end, you know. The way you're making the sound is like there's an end of it, right? You meditate that somehow it is a finish to that. There, you know, there will to, be when you're one with your being and you're not okay, yeah. your ego. No, that's, <laughs> that's the goal. No. Listen. Listen carefully. Only the Paramartasatyas 
know completely the willpower of God. But the gods still learning. I mean the universe. But those that enter into the absolute, they know completely willpower. They do the willpower of the ends of. And that's why they are, and they enter into the aim. So therefore, there are many, of course, uh, wills in the universe. Because each one of us has his own will. Our own will is related with our own mission, our own level, our own monad. We have to discover the vocation of our own monad in order to do its will. You see? No instructor will tell you, oh, you, your monad is this, your monad is that. No, no, no. It's not that any instructor will tell you. It's what you will discover. It's what you will be sure that your mother is ready with this, so therefore I'm going to do this. Because an instructor can tell you many things in relation with his own visions, which might be right, may be wrong. So therefore, the right way is follow your inner God, your inner guru, your inner rabbi. That's why when this man came to Jesus and says, just master. In the Bible it is written, good master. No, this is not, because good and evil are opposites. Just. And then he says, why are you calling me just? God is the only one that is just, that exercises justice, the right willpower. That really should be corrected in the Bible because it's good master. Don't call me good because good only God. No, God is not good. God is just. Good is another thing. Good is the opposite of evil. And God is beyond good and evil. And we can continue talking about willpower, as you see, forever. Because that's our dilemma. I mean, our, our motto. So I hope you understood uh, the whole thing. If there is no other lecture, I mean, uh, question, I'm going to be another lecture, of course, but not today. <laughs> Thank you for your attention and uh, have a w 